and after you made the investment, what was the most difficult? Or was it always smooth sailing? Because 2010, it was not that long ago, right? This yeah. is maybe five years ago. So has there been any tough spots and how have you navigated? Well, I, I, I think, you know, the because the, so I don't want you guys to think in the Xiaomi's the something can easily to translate that model. But basically, I want to share with you, a legend is so experienced. And he really designed a whole strategy to put that aggressive plan into very small piece. And each small piece can create what we call the positive, you know, the loop. Yeah. I'm the double E major, you know, the there that's the modeling you have to have get in a positive loop. Positive feedback. Positive feedback. So he, he can he's very experienced to to divide this very ambition objective into very small piece. The first step is to do the MIUI, the OS. The second step to create the loyal customers through the social network, zero marketing dollar. Very similar like Ma Max yeah. from the Instagram car. He shared with you that you don't need a marketing dollar. You really create a relevance to your target customers and convince him you can offer the best user experience. And without knowing you are a strong company, from heart, your customer love your product and is willing to recommend to his friend. We use that simple common sense to guide Xiaomi to move step by step. And we don't choose to launch the hardware immediately. We spend one year to do the OS. And that very smart strategy, because basically the first group of the early adopter of the, our OS user, those customers, they already purchased very expensive smartphone, Samsung, Motorola, HTC, cost you almost maybe 1,000 US dollar. And they take the risk to replace their OS, default Android OS, with Xiaomi OS. And that risk means sometimes it's a very tacky process. If, if doing something wrong, your phone just become the garbage. You cannot go back to the default OS. You know what I mean. It's a brick. It's brick. And, and, and because these customers so love the OS user experience, they take a the huge risk to replace that OS. So that's why we spend almost one year to have weekly update to engage with, with the end user. And you tell me what you want, and we respond very quickly. Another two weeks, we just say, hey, we deliver that for you. So we collect all the requests from all the users, and they vote. They the ranking list what feature you want to add on into the uh, OS, and then we deliver that. Every weekly, we update the OS. So that's very smart. Even though they don't, they have no idea this is the startup company. They just thought this is some uh, lab, small labs. It's a group of fans. They do that. Open source. It's open source, something like that. Because we don't want to use the traditional marketing campaign. Say, we are a great entrepreneur. We get VC funding. We are people like Google or something like yeah. that. That's very traditional main campaign to do that. Mm -hmm. We say no. We have no noise. Just product. Use it. We observe whether you love or not. And tell me what do you want. And we just deliver. And the Microsoft, every year they have the upgrade. We, we have weekly. Every week we just upgrade this, the, 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 the future to just accommodate your, you know, mm -hmm. your input. So within one year, we have almost one million very loyal customer without launching this hardware. And then one year later, we decided to launch the hardware. So was, this, was the OS sitting on third party hardware? Yes, yes exactly. Mm. So that's why when we have a similar, like, you know, um, do a press release, big event, yeah. and all the media, uh, newspaper, magazine, they p attend. And then a, lot of, a large group of fans, I mean, the, the OS fans. And those newspapers, a lot of 
is my friend. They just cannot understand why these people are so enthusiastic, why they are so exciting. They're very passionate about the. Uh, they're real passionate, and uh, they they come to me. You must pay a lot of money <laughs> to just make the fake, you know, the enthusiastic, you know, the atmosphere. That's that's definitely the one of the things the Chinese people are always very paranoid. Is yeah. this real or is this fake? They, they feel that, that because we Too keep so low profile. People cannot just believe you can create so many, you know, the strong response from those end user without our media, you know, the help. That's their, you know, the regular. And it's very interesting because I think this goes to some people would say this: it's better to have a hundred people customers who love you than, say, a million people who don't really care, right? Who is a pretty decent customer but are not passionate. Yeah. So you sort of create that core group of users who. Essentially, become a free marketing machine out there. Yeah, I, I I truly believe just like any marketing we learn from the B school, you need you have you need to have the early adopter, and gradually, the 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 mentality need to beat up people's mental block to receive the core value of your core product. But you 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 first just like virus, you you need a virus first group of early adopter, and they will help you educate them. Just like our, you know, the Xiaomi phone, a lot of, you know, the first group of the early adopter, they use that, and the second year they were replaced, upgraded to the second version. And they will leave their first generation phone to their parents, to their friends. You know, that's gradually, you know, viral, everybody. Yeah. Affect everybody, you know, like virus affect everybody. Right. So the top piece is that, you know, when we just launched a so successful campaign, without any, Inventory because we pre-order, you know the model. Yeah, yeah. So within just ten minutes, we got you know three hundred thousand orders. We we have to shut down the server because we cannot accept more orders. We cannot deliver from the supply chain. I, I only expect asking, was that part of the original business plan is to use this pre-order concept. Yes. So we did that in the phone because we have the OEM manufacturer like you know. Foxconn, we have a world-class supply chain. You already got that ready, you know? Yeah. But the basic point is that, you know, when we have the pre-order, we got trouble. I remember that in the year 2011. Japanese have the nuclear mm, right. leak. Yeah. And our screen comes from, you know, the shop. Yeah. And I believe Leijun is the first uh, group of business people visit Japan, even though there's a nuclear leak, because he have to go to the shop to make sure we can get that supply of the screen. Yeah. So that's, that's the killer instinct, and I got it. I need this. Because yeah, because we don't plan. We're gonna we, fail. we have, have the pre-order. We promise the customer will receive the, some product within some days. That's the risk. Mo that's the risk of this model. And then we have first the nuclear leak in Japan. It's world-class supply chain. We have the flood in Thailand. And all the flash memory <laughs> packaging supply chain is in Thailand. It's very tough. So those are the things from outside looking in we don't think about. Maybe. Yeah, you cannot predict what will happen. You know, Although you have so good you know, the turning point, you have the momentum, you have great, you know, the careful, you know, the uh, strategy, doing the in the right way. It looks perfect, but you cannot expect right. nuclear right. leak and, uh, and, and the flood in Thailand. So what do you see the vision for Xiaomi? What, how, how do you imagine Xiaomi in 10, Well, I, years? I, I really would like to share with you guys, I mean, the, I truly believe, you know, the China similar like the U.S. Um, U.S. is shaped by the baby boom generation. After World War II, this baby boom generation shaped the U.S. economy because the consumer come 70% of the U.S. economy system. I believe China, we have similarly, like we, I personally define that group of people. I call that, you know, post-cultural revolution generation. You know cultural revolution in China, right? 
the post-cultural revolution generation. That's in my age. We are similar like a baby booming generation. We are shaped the Chinese economy. That's one driver. Number two is that we fortunately, Deng Xiaoping opened the door. It's first time Chinese proactively participated into the globalization. If you look at the Chinese history, over 2,500 years, we never want to participate into globalization. Even in the Qing dynasty, we got in, you know, the, all this kind of you know, the history. The government don't want to involve in right, globalization. Right. They were but unwillingly involved. Unwilling. But this is the first time Chinese people is willing to involve, proactively involve into the globalization. That's the second driver. The third driver, I believe, is, is the innovation. And we see that in China, we can create a leapfrog effect. Who can tell me in the un United States, who is the largest retailer? And the Amazon, is, is he, is, are they ranked the num, num, e traditional and the e commerce? Amazon is now top three retailer, I guess. Uh, it, it's the top e tailor, but not. Yeah, the I'm, I'm talking about all the retailer. Including, including the, the traditional one. I think Amazon and Walmart probably the top two. I don't know which one's larger. Yeah. Okay, I tell you. In China, the, thing, the largest retailer is Alibaba Taobao. And they come for maybe very significant portion. Why? Because China don't have to follow the traditional industry growth mode. Mama and pop shop, department store, shopping mall, and the Walmart like big box things, and then e-commerce. We just have the mom and pop shop and the department store, and then immediately within just condensed, maybe in 10 years, the e-commerce emerge. And the, the traditional return, retailer have no time to dominate those you know, the sector and the innovation model, innovative model like e-commerce jump into that. So we see that we call the China has specifically jumping jump frog opportunity. Right. We can take the innovation. Just like mobile phone too. You Just like mobile phone. The so locations. I answer your question. I believe Xiaomi is typically take advantage of that three driver. First, we probably have the world largest domestic consumption market potentially. We have 1.3 billion population. 300 to 400 are middle class right now. And then in the next 10 years, 20 years, we'll grow up maybe 700 million middle class. They have huge consumption market. And that huge domestic market can create probably the most powerful cost structure because of economic scale. 